Exogenous ketones have been all the rage lately, from companies claiming you can lose 30 pounds in 30 minutes to a new study showing no fat loss over six weeks. I'm here to break it down for you and talk about if ketones will help with fat loss or not. Hello and welcome back to the Dr. Ryan Lowry YouTube channel. On today's segment, we're gonna be talking all about ketones and fat loss. You all know I've been very outspoken about the keto pill nonsense and how they claim you can lose an insane amount of weight in little to no time. Let me just be clear. If it comes in a pill and says it's ketones, then it's absolutely useless. Run far, far away. We need to put like the run for us, run, run. <laughs> that being said, the ultimate question many of you are asking is do any type or dosage of ketones help with fat loss? The answer might surprise you. A recent study done by our colleague, Dr. Jeff Volick, titled The Effect of a Six Week Well Controlled Hypocaloric Ketogenic Diet with or Without Exogenous Ketone Salts on Body Composition provided some insight into this. So let's break down this study design, what they did, and then let's talk about the results. So they took three groups of overweight or obese adults, 12 people in each group, a mix of men and women. All groups were fed a hypocaloric diet, this is important, which was about 75% of their energy expenditure for six weeks. One group was labeled as a comparison group that was just a low fat, Another was a calorie restricted ketogenic diet. And the last group was a calorie restricted ketogenic diet plus 24 grams of racemic DLBHB salts. So what were the results? Well, if you read the headlines, it might say something like this. New study finds exogenous ketones are just expensive urine, right? In short, what they actually found where fasting ketone levels were significantly higher by week two and stayed higher by week six in both the ketogenic diet and ketogenic diet uh, plus ketone group. It's a quick adaptation period, but the food was tightly controlled and that likely allowed for that, right? Also, there was no significant differences in weight loss or any changes in body composition markers between the ketogenic diet plus ketones or ketogenic diet alone. Right? At surface level, this might seem like a dagger for exogenous ketones. However, exogenous ketones aren't intended to directly cause fat loss through some, some miracle mechanism, right? The only thing in the world that can likely do that is ephedra, and guess what? It's illegal, right? <laughs> so let's dive into some more interesting insights that I think we can take away from this same study. Well, for one, fasting ketones were higher in the ketogenic diet plus ketone group in week one and week two, and I'll put a picture here. But keep in mind that ketone levels were taken 10 plus hours after their last dose. Thus, this increased elevation wasn't just due to this acute or transient elevation in ketones from the supplement, right? So that's interesting. Despite what many people think, it doesn't appear that ketone levels, even at the 24 grams that they were giving, doesn't seem to shut off ketogenesis at all. And I've been talking about this a lot. If you look at the graph and interpret keto adaptation as being above 0.5 millimoles, then the ketogenic diet plus ketones group actually adapted faster. So this could be an application for exogenous ketones in that they help speed the keto adaptation process without inhibiting our body's own ketone production when kept in effective yet moderate range. And I'm talking about less than three millimoles. There's a lot of talk about consuming exogenous ketones when on a ketogenic diet will inhibit this thing known as lipolysis or fat breakdown, right? Over the six weeks, there were no differences in weight or fat loss. In fact, it was not statistically significant, but the ketogenic diet plus ketones lost 4.8 kilograms of body fat mass, while the ketogenic diet group lost 4.4. So about 0.88 pounds more body fat loss for the ketogenic diet plus ketones. There were no differences in RER, respiratory exchange ratio, which is this ratio between the amount of CO2 produced uh, and O2 used, right? 
over the six weeks, which is, this is indicative of fat burning. We, we look at this a lot inside of our lab as well. There was a group trend for lower urinary urea nitrogen excretion, right? In the ketogenic diet plus ketone salt group, right? About 8%. It wasn't statistically significant, but this is a marker of protein metabolism, which may be more sensitive to acute change than like long-term uh, look changes in body composition, right? It would be interesting to see what would happen over a longer period of time than just six weeks if we were to kind of carry this out. So let's talk about some limitations of the study. Well, for one, they used racemic or DLBHB salts, which means they pro provided about five grams of actually efficacious material per serving. It really would have been nice to see what happened if they used non racemic salts at a higher dosage. And I have a whole nother video that I'll link below explaining what are ketones, what are the differences, et cetera. Now, let me preface this by saying this is, this is a really important and much needed study. And I have the utmost respect for Dr. Volick, Dr. Kramer, their lab. They do incredible work at Ohio State University. It's super difficult when designing any study because there's a million and one variables that you want to control, right? And you, you're always going back and forth. What do we control? What can't we control? Fortunately for them, they have an amazing ability to control diet very rigidly, which is amazing for control. 99% of studies can't do that and can't really take into account compliance uh, for a diet because they, they can't control diet like them. That being said, this study took out the real world application of food choice and intuitive eating, which seems to be the primary mechanism for how ketones may assist with fat loss, right? So if we look at a couple other studies like Erase et al., they infused ketones and found reduced food intake and body weight in rats eating a high carb or high fat diet. Rossi 2000 injected goats, interesting study, with either D or DLBHB. They found no blunting of appetite with DLBHB, which was used in this study, but DBHB reduced feed in the pygmy goats and the hypophagia appeared to be related to the amount of DBHB that they injected right? Super, super interesting study. And they said they needed, in order for to see the redu reduction in eating, they needed an over about a 0.7 millimole, which how that translates to humans, who knows, but it, it shows you that a higher level may be needed for that hypophagic response. Dr. Paoli has a great summary paper that I'll link below in the comments uh, that talks about the relationship between ketosis, food intake, including things like decreasing circulating ghrelin, which is our hunger hormone, or perhaps even working on increasing leptin levels, which Dr. Veach's lab saw one of, in one of their most recent studies as well. So my overall takeaways, one, when calories are controlled, will ketones magically melt fat off of your body compared to calories being controlled through other means? No. In fact, I'd be worried if they did. It'd probably be banned like ephedra. <laughs> Would the results be different if subjects were fed ad libitum, meaning they just ate what they, kind of like a real world scenario? Possibly. Based on other research with the effects of ketones on appetite, um, ghrelin, things like that, subjects would likely have eaten less calories, therefore leading to those changes in body composition. Three, could duration have an effect? Always. But it's, it's truly difficult to control subjects for that many months, so likely you'll never see anything longer than six to 12 weeks when diet is really controlled. The next question is, could the type of ketones had an effect? Uh, sure. We know that the non-racemic ketones are far superior to the racemic. However, they still wouldn't magically melt off body fat if calories were tightly controlled and diet was literally given to people like, like it was in this study. Four, ketone supplementation didn't really negatively affect markers of fat oxidation, body fat percentage, ketone levels, or even keto adaptation, which is contrary to what most people think when it comes to exogenous ketones. And that was the main things that, that I took away from this. And I hope this helps clarify the whole, do ketones help with fat loss questions, right? So on one end, we're talking about if, if diet was strictly controlled, like it was in this study, it's not gonna be some miraculous thing that ketones come in and they just melt body fat off. 
but in a real world practical application where people are eating ad libitum or they have the choice to, to say how much they're going to eat and not strictly given meals, would it have an effect? Possibly. But I think the results of this study are more interesting in that a lot of people think exogenous ketones, blunt fat metabolism, will turn off you from burning fat and affect body fat percentage, and that is not what they saw. So let me know in the comments your thoughts on this topic. I would love to hear what you guys think about this and any other studies or questions you would like me to look at and for us to answer. I appreciate you and I'll talk to you soon.